Welcome viewers of the Chico Army and any new souls to the best blockchain show on YouTube, Chico Cryptos Breaking Down the Blockchain. So, Web 3.0, P2P transfer, a new kind of internet. The blockchain and its technologies are bringing a new wave of data transfer for the human population. You could almost say we are forming a new kind of network. Yes, today we are going to be diving into a critical piece of NEO's investment wing, NEO Global Capital, and their Fund One, a new kind of network, or NKN. NKN can be generally described as a highly scalable, self-evolving, and self-incentivized blockchain network infrastructure. Most new forms of internet are based off of P2P networks and their technologies. These networks topology usually have some form of centralization and is vulnerable to faulty and malicious nodes. Second, the scalability of these networks is widely sacrificed to enhance control of the network. And of course, there is no economic incentive for strong connections and fluid data transmissions. NKN is setting themselves up to revolutionize the networks by becoming the Uber or Airbnb of the trillion dollar communication service business. NKN is the third pillar of the new internet infrastructure. Bitcoin and Ethereum can be considered the computing pillar, IPFS and Filecoin can be considered the storage pillar, and NKN can be considered the network pillar. The NKN network pillar is further broken down into three layers that drive the platform, which differ from existing solutions. Usually, you just have your blockchain structure, cryptography, and on top of that, you have your application layer for dApps and smart contracts, i.e. Ethereum. So with NKN, first is the network layer, which includes cellular automata and dynamic topology. Second is the consensus layer, which includes more useful proof of work called proof of relay. And third is the incentive layer, which tokenizes transmission and connectivity. So let's get out our Chico Crypto breakdown tools out of the toolbox and start tearing this project down, beginning with the network layer. Within this layer is the cellular automata rules, which allow the network to achieve full decentralization. All nodes in the network are equals, truly peer-to-peer, -peer, and each can send, receive, and relay data. The rules of cellular automata define network topology, and within NKN is a state machine with a collection of nodes. Each node changes its state following a rule that only depends on its neighbor's nodes. The state changes of nodes will propagate through others, dynamically changing their state, which then updates the formulas of cellular automata, which are called the local rules. The rule changes further change the structure of the network, without hurting network performance or changing the protocol. To further understand this, let's look at cellular automata where blocks are just being generated with simple states of the nodes. In a network, each time a block is received, the node updates its state and sends a block to its neighbor nodes with its digital signature. The neighbor nodes will decide to forward the message depending on their states, like has it received the block, um, receive block and the block is valid, or receive block and in conflict with other blocks in the state. This effectively affects the way the network is interrelated and arranged, but not affecting the underlying protocol. The network layer has its own consensus, called Cellular Automata Consensus Algorithm. The consensus is structured after Wolfram Class 4 Cellular Automata. The structure is complex, self-organizing, and within it, dynamic structures emerge spontaneously at the edge of chaos. So it makes it an ideal candidate for decentralized systems. The consensus is mapped using the icing model and uses majority vote as the updating rule for the cellular automata. Information for consensus, such as the next block, is sent to all participating nodes at the beginning of the round through a gossip-like protocol. It is event-driven and triggered by messages. Each consensus message has a topic ID that identifies what is being agreed upon. So, when a node receives a consensus message from a neighbor to accept or reject a block, and its first message is with the topic ID, the node computes the initial state and sends that state to their neighbors. The sender state is then updated for the topic ID. If more than half of the neighbor nodes have another state from the initial state for the topic ID, then the initial state changes to majority state, 
and it is sent to the neighbors. When the majority vote reaches equilibrium, all nodes will have the same state, which depends on the initial conditions of the nodes, allowing consensus to be achieved. So in the consensus layer, a more useful proof of work is employed, called proof of relay. The expected rewards a node gets depends on its network connectivity and data transmission power. With this model, resources are not wasted as a node is only rewarded based on its performance. Mining is redefined by contribution to the data transmission of the network, and the only way to get higher rewards is to provide more transmission power. This competition will drive the network towards high performance with low latency and high bandwidth. So proof of relay is just a way to prove how much data a node relayed. Data within the network is transmitted via network packets. Packets originate from the source, either a node or a client. Then they are relayed by nodes and then finally arrives at its destination, another node or a client. The packets contain data fields, which include its payload, the payload hash, payload sides, source NKN address and public key, destination NK address and public key, and finally the critical components that make this work, the signature chain. You can think of the signature chain as just an interconnected chain of signatures signed by nodes in sequence that relayed the packet. This chain provides verifiability of the packets to anyone who has access to them, allowing trusted free flow of data while stopping malicious parties trying to tamper with the packet or chain because they would need the private keys of every signature along the signature chain. The signature chain and packet allow the incentive layer to function by tokenizing the information that is received. Based on the information from the signature chain and packet, nodes can be rewarded based on the size of the packet, time it took, and was it successful. One question that came up for me was what if malicious parties controlled all the nodes for the root, including the source and the destination? The node could create an NKN packet and valid signature chains without actually moving the data. NKN answered the question by breaking roots of data into two classes, secure paths and other paths. So secure paths are the only paths that receive relay rewards. The path has to satisfy three different conditions. One, each hop of the path is between designated neighbor nodes. Two, the path is the designated path following the routing rule. And third, the length of the path is higher than the threshold. With other paths, which don't satisfy the three requirements, they only get the reward that the relay node would get for the path that is paid by the source. If they are the source, then it is a complete waste of time. NKN tokens are the fuel of the network, and they are used for the relay rewards as well as for the initial sending of data from the source. And guess what? The price of NKN is pumping like a solid madman. As of shooting this video, almost a 40% gain from the day before. Man, I love alt season. So what's the reason for this pump? NKN is most likely winning the community vote for Binance, which means a second NEP5 for Binance. Woo, baby! Old Da Hongfei might have had something to do with this, you know. So cheers, and as always, yours. I'll see you tomorrow.